because I wasn't expecting to hear or see what I saw when I discovered you guys on Instagram. Of course, I'm, <laughs> I mean, I always have an open ear and open eyes, but it's rare that something takes me off guard. And of course, when I recognize Mel Machete or is it Machete, if you want to pronounce it like Mel that. Machete, too. For sure, right. Mel right. Let's yeah. do it like that. Let's do it right. But yeah, you, delivering the goods, I felt like uh, you guys have uh, an immediacy with what you're presenting um, just from a presence like just uh, uh, from a showmanship kind of thing there's yeah. something there that goes beyond just rock and roll and that's something that i think is missing a lot uh yeah. so nowadays especially in, in rock music specifically i think there's a lack of characters out there a lack of that that uh something like that presentation and it seems like you guys are bringing that so again welcome to the show really thank you max well, i really appreciate that that's really yeah. nice of you to say yes very much appreciated man yeah Thanks. Don't we'll recognize real, man. <laughs> Always. <laughs> right on. Real. Yeah, so uh, just to get started, would you uh, guys mind introducing yourselves to... Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, I'm Mel. This is Paul, and we're in uh, the band Mel Machete, Mel Machete. We're based in Richmond, Virginia. We all live here. We're all buds. And yeah, we're excited to be here. Right on. So where does it all, because you guys are fairly new to the scene. You guys released an EP last summer, a self-titled EP. You can find it on Spotify, wherever you stream um, right now. And uh, you guys are also on Bandcamp, but where did it all start for you? What is the origin story? So Paul has been in the, the Richmond music scene for, for a while. If you want to take it away, Hanzo. Yeah, we've just been playing music forever. Uh, but as far as Mel Machete goes, well, we were in Sick Bags before. We were in a band called Sick Bags, um, yeah. Um, I've been playing in the Richmond scene for years before that, but uh, Tony, who was in that band, uh, legendary rock and roll dude. Um, but after COVID, kind of disbanded. But so we had already had some connections and reputation for that. And um, but we just wanted to keep the, keep the rock and roll going on. So basically... Um, I took the reins on writing the music. And I and, wrote the lyrics and, um, yeah. Got, yeah. Okay. Got a, <laughs> got a group of my friends that I was really had some reliable uh, pairs. And, uh, yeah, it kind of went from there. Um, started out as just kind of almost a recording project, see where we go. And then we got to the studio and, and we fucking, it just sounded, oh, sorry. Uh, it sounded so good that we just wanted to continue going on. So, yeah. So those members, huh? we've we've had we had some momentum right before Sick Bags ended, and uh, unfortunately, that that project just kind of fell through. Um, and Paul and I were already, you know, we kind of just wanted to keep the ball rolling, so we started this. We Paul got an eight track, and we he wrote a riff, recorded it on the 8-track, and then, I mean, the rest was kind of history from there. And also, with the idea of taking, at least for me, taking concepts and ideas from all the music that I love and kind of putting it all into one. So everything from 60s garage to glam, glam 70s, proto, Bob, bobber rock, yeah. like, you know, Australian, seven, yeah, it's, it, we, we try and incorporate a lot of our, our influences and, uh, because it's not something that we, I feel like that that hasn't quite been tapped into as far as I know, like in this day and age, something glammy, something like, you know, it's, 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 it, well, being it's, that, it's like, we just want to, we just want like a resurgence of like, yeah. like fun rock and roll, like not yeah. no too tough attitude. Like, I, you know, I'm not about that. We just want to have fun. So yeah. Does that make and, sense? <laughs> yeah, it does. I, I'm, I'm a huge fan of like, uh, back in the day when you had personalities in music like sure. i love them um, like i'm a huge fan of adam and the ants and you know Susie and the banshees and 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 yeah. going to punk like iggy and wendy the stooges o, wendy o williams yeah wow. exactly you get it i get yeah. it you get, get it. it see yeah so. a lot of positive influence for us and for sure uh, heavy metal kids um heavy metal kids gary Horton, yeah, gary, like, gary holton 
Uh, <laughs> Yes. Uh, yeah, all those, all those like eccentric, yeah, eccentric characters. Bon for sure. Scott, yeah, bon you, Scott, you yeah. get it. Man. You brought it, yeah. Bon Scott, that's another one I was gonna bring up. I hear a lot of early like Bon Scott era, eight, like Power Ridge, uh, you know, Let There Be Rock era, ACDC there that's with like, some of the stuff. Yeah. Definitely a lot of Australia influence for yeah. that that whole era, seventies, a, yeah. a lot. Well, we we need that right now, and then so I, again, I'm I was taken aback because I, you know, I'm always searching, and so when I discover something that really g- gets me going, I, you know, I have to, I have, yeah, absolutely. You know the feeling, you know, when you hear something that's just so damn good that you, and nowadays it's, it's hard to come by. I feel like every year it gets a little harder to come by, but when you find that diamond in the rough, it's that's, just like, if I don't hear something like that like every you ivory up so often then i'll go crazy you know yeah yeah so the ep in particular sounds like it's like the beginning of something more to come like i it's it's it comes and goes in a flash um kind of like it's very old school of course in that approach but is there a new music written already yeah we're we're right we're writing like that's the thing with that's that's a really that's a beautiful thing with this band is like, it's very easy to just like get it out. Like, you know, with this is like our project and this is like our, it's, it's very much a labor of love. Like we're not expecting anything of it, but this is like our outlet. Like this is like the way that I stay sane. Like, um, so yeah, there is, and, and that said, yeah, there's, there's a lot more coming because I mean, yeah, it's just, so that we so the EP that you hear is coming mm-hmm. out on final soon. We're sending right. it. We're sending it to the um. How could I forget to the to factory? Say that? Yeah. Uh, our buddies at Religious Records, who put on the uh, the showdown or the down south lockdown last year. This is where we kind of like made our debut. Um, brand new label. They put out a comp that just came out. Um, like right, uh, can we get the like mid mid So yeah. a bunch of like. Heavy hitter rock and roll going on there, a lot of new stuff. Um, kind of keeping the dream alive, and they're just they're going for it. They got a couple of releases that are coming out, um, hopefully by summer. Production for that whole stuff is like real slow right now, real backed up, as is life with COVID and everything. But yeah, just so we do have, yeah, that record vinyl coming out, and then we're going to the studio here soon to yeah record some new stuff and hopefully get that ball rolling with. A new release after that. What What's your approach to producing your music? Because uh, I hear something that's just really direct and raw, not overproduced. Mm-hmm. Very. Is that how you approach your recordings? <laughs> what would you say? <laughs> well, I yeah yeah. Um, basically, yeah. I'll just be fiddling around with the guitar, or whatever, messing around, uh, kind of get an idea, then I'll have that idea in my head and I'll go over and over and then I'll start playing it. Then I'll put it down on, on my little eight track with a little drum thing and then I'll take it to the guys. And then that's where we, uh, I say like we machete it basically. I get my boy on bass and he lays down like that just super That's 70s, the thing though, like, Max. Bass yeah. Line and it's like, Gunner hits the drum like, yeah, our, the song goes from sound. Our group, it's like, oh my God, I, j- I wish, I wish that everybody can be in the, the room when we're like practicing or, or bringing something new to the table it's like because they all have the same kind of influences like it and, and that makes the 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 production and the songwriting process so much easier is when everyone's kind of on the same page um but yeah as far as like i mean yeah. but then so our first time in the studio was a uh, our buddy adrian uh montrose studios just he like inherited or like his like it's been in his family for generations it's now wild. um it's wh- so his, just all his, super it's awesome wild. vintage equipment it's my second time recording in there but my first time with like a project that i was like kind of you know kind of head of as far as like you know sound goes and he got it and he just made a sound it was the first time i've like recorded was like holy shit this is exactly how what I've been writing for years and years now, it's like the first time I've like been able to encapsulate it and have it come out to sound exactly like how I envision it, which is, as an artist, is very difficult to do sometimes. And 
when you can find it, you got to hold on to it. Yeah, I, I hear the synergy uh, in the music and it sounds very alive. It sounds like uh, almost like you captured. I think you're one of those bands that you just have to hit record really and, and just go crazy. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, that's what we do. Like, Is that what you do? Just sit record? <laughs> it's basically, yeah. It's like, oh, let's just do it, do it, write it. Like, I don't overthink it. And then once we're in the studio or whatever, then we'll just start laying stuff down. And I'm like, well, then, like, this comes to mind. And then this is, like, every practice also. It's like the songs just evolve and just get better and better, like, no matter what. So um, if you don't mind me asking, Mel, where, how do you, this music's, like, really, like, it's heavy. Where, how do you fit into that? Like, what is your approach from a melodic standpoint, from a lyrical standpoint? Is it the music that drives you to write and, and perform the way you do? What, what is your approach? Oh, well, okay. Um, as far as lyrics go, mm -hmm. um, it's like all from experiences. Like, I, 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 I don't write. I'm like, I write from like what I know, I write what I know. And that's like, that's how, that's why it's real. And that's why it feels real. And that's why it's easy to like get into it. Whereas with a previous project, like, that may have not been the case. Like this is, these are my words and this is my, like, you know, these are my feelings. So it's a, it's a vulnerable place to be, but it, I mean, that's how I keep it real. Like that's how it, that's just, I mean, that's, that's why it, it's so natural to like, that's why it's easy to like perform because that's, the words and the feelings are second nature that, that I'm able to like kind of elevate that with a performance and like, you know, give it like some, you know, that punch and that like, that's fun, you know, persona. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's like, that's, that's what, that's how I, that's how I work like lyrically like it's just like what I know I don't I don't I'm not gonna fake it I'm not gonna write about something that I don't know um and it's like uh melodically um yeah I would like when I listen to the riffs and like once they've created something once the band has created something the way that I go about it lyrically is like um it's like I mean, a song can be written a million different ways. Like you can sing over a song a million different ways, but I am like, I mean, that's like, that's where my influences come into play is like when I, you know, Wendy O. Williams, Tex and the Horse Heads, like Teenage Head, Slaughter and the Dogs, like Ted Nugent, all these people, all, all, the, all the music that I've listened to kind of like morphs into something in my mind. And it's like somehow, the melody is like, it just, it just comes out of me because it's like what I know. Again, it's like, all, I only do what I know. I don't, I'm not gonna like fake it. I'm not gonna force anything. I'm just doing what I know. And that's where the melody, that's where the cadence, that's where the lyrics come from. Is like all heart. from, and the heart and the soul, obviously. Um, but yeah, that's, that's just like, that's, I guess that's the best way to describe it. I, I've never really put that into words. So it's like a little tough. Oh, it's okay. That's what, that's what this show's here for. It's yeah. to serve this purpose. Right. But um, it sounds to me like everybody involved in this is coming at it from a very organic perspective. Everybody yeah. kind of just fits the piece of the puzzle that they need to fit in. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, it's really special what we have. And I'm, I thank my lucky stars every day that like we all kind of found each other, but we've all been friends for like a thousand years. Like Paul and Sean have been friends since middle school. Sean is the bassist. Gunner and I have like, or, you know, we try, I try to get Gunner in my old band, but that didn't work out. Thank goodness. Like it was meant to be, it was meant to be in this band, but and me and Mike are you, best friends. Work Mike together. The same here. Like we're all just like tight. And that's, I, I'm many more times than one has, has, has somebody come up to me after a show and been like, you guys just look like you're having fun. And I'm like, yeah, cause we just have fun in real life. Like that's <laughs> just like what we do. Like we're just pals, we're friends. And I think that that connection is important because it like translates to like, it translates to the audience and like the people who are watching. It's just fun. It's just fun. I mean, you even have your, the opening track of your debut EP is called Machete Gang, right? So yeah, we're the there you machete. go. Yeah, 
Yeah. Yeah. And so how, even in, in our our song Good Luck Boys, I do like a little intro to everybody, like freaky tiki freaky tiki Polly is gonna give us a ride. He's got the spot where we'll get down tonight. Sean's he's got the booze, sip is taking a sip, and gunner's a machine, and he's ready to rip. That's amazing. Just, you know, just just giving credit where credit's due. That's so cool though. I think that it, it creates a sense of community in the music that you're creating. And I think that again, we need I think we need that nowadays too, just in general with everything going on. I think we need some fun, a little bit of fun out there, especially with the music that we listen to, because things can get really depressing, like really quick, right? Oh, absolutely. So. Absolutely. And I will say, I think there's like a really cool thing going on. I feel like rock and roll in this day and age hasn't really had its like time to shine yet, or it's kind of like in the, on the back burner, things, things come and go, things come in waves and cycles for sure. Um, But like Rambler, Camino, Some Hearts, like all these, all of our colleagues, the, the like kind of new kids on the block. I think there, I think, I think, well, <laughs> some hearts, yeah. Camino, us, Rambler has been around for a while, but they're definitely like paving the way. I think there's, I think there's something really cool coming. Like there's like, there's like a, a really cool thing going on right now that I, I wish more people could hear. Yeah. I think there's these little like com- scenes building in certain areas throughout the world. And I think everybody kind of needs to huddle up, get together and keep doing what they're doing. And hopefully someone more and more people take notice and, you know, you guys blow up because um, I think the, what stands out is not just the community that you're building, but the quality of the songs. I think there's a real attitude and energy. And uh, again, that to me transcends everything. So yeah, yeah. all those people that we described are all yeah. lifer. They've been yeah, doing they, it's like new, newer bands, but we've, they've been doing it since birth basically so yeah everyone's true real the real deal and just rock and roll to the bone basically and that's what you're hearing from all these and what you're going to be hearing from all these people is basically a genuinity that um not playing a part just like really... is, is finally surfacing and that's happening with the lot of yeah you guys aren't pretentious at all there's like no pretension here it's it's real yeah 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 what you see is what you get yeah yeah we're you know we're fighters we're like but we're like sweet like you know we've done we've done we've like had our moments we're you know we're just like crazy we're Mm -hmm. psychotic i'm a little crazy too i'm just keeping it together right now yeah like I punched a guy out of a bar stool for looking me sideways and I've like body slammed. You know what I mean? Like we've had like our psycho moments. Yeah. And now, but all, <laughs> that's why like the two, this like, you know, you said we we're tough. We're, we don't like act tough, but that's just. Well, like, that's where I like the melody. Cause uh, I like, yeah. Like even all that old music, it's all those people, all that stuff is so tough, but there's always a nice melody, always. always man, that's what always. makes you, that's what actually digs into your heart and gets in your spine and makes you like get those chills is that melody that you like want to get up and like dance to basically. I, I always cite one of my favorite bands from back in the day, uh, Cheap Trick. Like they were really good at like, especially the early stuff, like really yeah. visceral and in your face. But they had these sweet pop melodies or the Ramones even would do that too. They would attack a song like a punk band, but they're really pop songs at heart. Exactly. Yeah. yeah that's that's the stuff that I love. It's just yeah. like hard hitting pop, basically. Yeah. Yeah. So that send, I love something that sends me to the sky, like a, a yeah. ooh, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, just like a solo that sends me somewhere else. <laughs> like, and I li- we that's the thing is we listen to like in every piece of music that we listen to on a day to day basis will always like every single aspect of every song is like we're like sponges we're just like oh my <laughs> yeah, god this hit me this way because this mm-hmm. you know kind of geeking out over like you know. yeah so w- what are you like based on the new material you've been gathering like can you tell there's a difference already as far as like a development like here or, like a growth and where you're going next yeah um so i like this the 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 first like the eight the ep that's like our first that's like that's our introduction like and um 
that was that was so inspired by like like I said like for for me personally like teenage head slaughter and the dogs like that kind of like um you know even the runaways or like uh even, you know, text the horse heads, a lot of, a lot of, like, a lot of you know, I hate to say, but Gary Glitter, like, a, yeah, a lot of like glam influences, whereas now we're kind of, um, I don't even know, like we're, we're going, it's still, it's still heavy. We're going I mean, like, that, like, we want to, I, I, we just, we're in this, it's, we, we also come in phases where it's like glam was like what we were listening to a lot when we first started this. Now it's like, we're kind of like, we're kind of into like, I don't know, like Bobber, like Australian, like that's like, or like Plasmatics, like Wendy, like, you know what I mean? Like we listen to the, our, yeah, our own Slade like, and Slade, like, Slade, like, oh yeah. Yeah. So, so still, the, but still is keeping that 70s. We're still going to keep, 80s, we're, yeah, 70s for sure, but like of, we're, we're shifting yeah, the yeah. sound just a, just a smidge. Also like, even like a lot of 80s. I mean, some hair metal, you know, you got Tank, uh, Guns N' Roses, Guns and Ro and Hanoi obviously. Rocks, Hanoi Rocks like, Smack. Yeah. Yeah, throw, Smack. Throw some rad in there, too, okay? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, I love those bands that came out of that, like the early 80s, like Sunset Strip scene, the, you know, like Motley Crue, like Rat, like yeah, yeah. that, those guys to me, like early Quiet Riot. Yeah, you know, obviously, yeah. that's also a really big yeah. early influence for us too. Like, we, yeah, that, I mean, I, yeah, that, I grew up like, on yeah. that stuff. Like, yeah. you know, my mom's like an '80s LA rocker. Like, I, w I would, I would essentially like make up like strip, strip dances for mm -hmm. like my parents, and I was like three to like Molly Crew. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like dance, but yeah. Oh, so yeah, it's like it's like in our it's in our it's in our blood. Like this, you know, that's like in our blood. Music. All right. That sounds good to me. And so what's your MO as, as a band starting out, just getting ready to, you know, you know, building that center stage for yourselves? Like, what's your MO now as far as like the next steps besides the new music? Just playing, touring, like that's literally the goal. We don't expect, again, this is like a labor of love. We don't expect mm -hmm. anything to come from it my goal is to have like some little like Latina girl, like looking through the dollar records and finding Mel Machete and being like, who's this? Like, you know, putting it on and getting inspired. And then, you know, I just, I, I want to be a part of like history, but I don't want anything. I don't expect any, like. Just put a couple records out. Yeah. Go on tour as much as we can. It's, it's pretty hard right now because shit gets, gets canceled every We'll every see, month, yeah. every month is different. So basically, just trying to ride the wave when you can, and then you know. we just want to have fun. We just want to have fun with our friends, and you know. Yeah, I, it, it's a crazy world. I, I see a tour getting announced, and then like a week before, I'm gonna go see the show. The show get the the, tour, the whole tour gets canceled. Like, what's going I on? Know. Come on. I know. I know that was us with Rose Tattoo. I was gonna go see Rose Tattoo and their tour. Oh, the, they're one of the best. Like, yeah, highly influential. Another Australian, yeah, yeah. yeah, rock group that basically is. Yeah, it's like that's what we center all of our stuff around too. Yeah. Like, yeah, that. Yeah. Right on. So, just with that being said, I have to say um, thank you so much for doing this. I mean, I, the whole idea is like to basically create a platform for anybody and everybody that wants to talk and promote what they do. Um, I don't think there's enough of mu music talk platforms out there for newer artists and um, with people like that champion those newer artists. So I like, this is a passion project of mine and I'm really happy to have you on. And uh, this is only like a year and three months now. This is my passion project. I love it. I love right, it. Man. Yeah, for sure. Thank you so much for having us and you know, all the support to you. Like we, you know, we're really happy to be on this awesome yeah you you guys like you'll always be welcome here just in case you didn't know that already so Thanks, Max. 